Today, we're going to be talking about a parasitic infection that's one of the major causes of adult onset seizures in people who've lived in developing parts of the world. Cystocercosis is a tissue infection caused by ingesting the eggs of the tapeworm Tinea solium. These eggs can form cysts in the brain, muscle, eyes, or other tissues, and people can be infected with T. solium for years without any symptoms, as was the case with this 20-year-old man named Diego. Diego moved to the United States from Mexico a year ago at the age of 19 and found work as a day laborer on several construction teams. Two days after his 20th birthday, Diego was installing a roof on a single-story home when he suffered a grand mal seizure and fell to the ground. Having witnessed the seizure, his co-workers were terrified, and they also thought he might have broken one or both of his legs because he fell onto the edge of a rebar structure, hitting both of his shins. So they took him to the emergency room where you happen to be doing your first emergency medicine rotation. Although Diego is still drowsy after the seizure, he's conscious and able to answer questions upon arrival. The attending physician asks him if he's ever had a seizure in the past, and he tells her that he's never had a seizure and has been completely healthy until now. During the history, Diego reveals that he's from a small village in Mexico where his mother and younger siblings live on a very small income that they get from raising a few pigs. Diego moved to the U.S. so that he could earn some extra money to send back to the family, but he's living here without legal documents, and he's scared that he's going to be deported. The attending physician reassures him that the job of the medical team is to treat his injuries and find out why this seizure occurred. Physical exam reveals a healthy-looking young man with swelling and tenderness to palpation of both lower legs. You're asked to review the x-ray of Diego's lower limbs with the radiologist while Diego undergoes an MRI. And the radiologist reports no visible fractures, but multiple calcified lesions in the soft tissue of Diego's legs. You immediately take these findings to the attending physician who tells you that the radiological findings support her suspicions that Diego is suffering from neurocystocercosis. When Diego's MRI shows multiple cysts in his brain, the diagnosis is confirmed. Growing up in an under-resourced area without access to proper sanitation, human feces often end up being ingested by pigs. This is actually a good arrangement because it helps people turn their own waste into pork, a source of food and income. But if the human waste contains T. solium eggs, then there can be trouble. When pigs ingest those eggs, T. solium then colonizes and persists inside the pigs by forming larval cysts in their soft tissues. Diego's mother probably ate undercooked pork and ingested some of these cysts, and that led to the growth of tapeworms in her intestines, a condition called tenaiasis. In this way, she became the definitive host for T. solium. The tapeworms caused her almost no symptoms. In fact, T. solium has evolved such that it can persist inside its host, either in the form of worms or larval cysts, without causing much trouble. So the parasite is initially tolerated by the host's immune system, and the host is unlikely to seek medical attention for this silent infection. The tapeworm replicates by shedding eggs that then exit via the feces. Because there was no running water for hand washing in the village where Diego grew up, his mother inadvertently transferred T. solium eggs to the other family members in the food she prepared for them. Fecal oral transmission provided a route of entry into Diego, who then became an accidental dead-end human host. Because of the lack of toilets and proper sanitation, the mother's feces, contaminated with T. solium eggs, went on to contaminate the pig feed, thereby continuing the cycle of infection, as the pigs also become intermediate hosts. In fact, auto-infection also happens in some cases when people with tenaiasis ingest eggs of their own worms. 
In short, if you eat a cyst, you get a worm. If you eat an egg, you get a cyst. You ask your attending physician why Diego suffered a seizure if T. solium has evolved not to cause problems in its host, and she tells you that the cysts won't multiply or move through the body, but instead they sit there and gradually enlarge. And ironically, clinical problems often start when the larval cysts die of old age. In Diego's case, one or more cysts in his brain may have begun to die, and this triggered an inflammatory response in his brain, mediated by his immune system. The degenerating cyst was detected and recognized as non-self, and the immune system deployed immune defense cells, including eosinophils, which are often elevated in tissue-invasive parasitic infections, as they were in Diego's blood. Diego's blood work also later revealed the presence of IgG antibodies to the T. solium parasite, the immune system's attempt to eliminate and remember this parasite. Diego was started on a corticosteroid to control the inflammation and then albendazol to eliminate the T. solium that might persist inside other cysts at earlier stages of development in his body. Most importantly, Diego was started on an AED, an anti-epileptic drug, to control his seizures, and thankfully these treatments worked. Diego never had a second seizure, and he was able to come off his medications eventually and make a complete recovery.